Say that. We're Christian. We're Christ like. Yeah. Amen. We're not just church folks got one foot in the church and one foot in the world. Amen. But we're trying to be Christian. Yeah, to be Christ like. That's what the people got it all mixed up thinking that we are church folks. No, I'm not a church folk. I am a Christian. Amen. I am trying to be like Amen. Jesus Christ. You understand? Amen. And they were called Christians in Antioch. You can check it out in, in the book of Acts. They were called the Christians in Antioch. Acts 11, you will find it. When they were preaching the God's word and the people called them Christians, what do you mean? They were acting like who? Christ. Jesus Christ. So Christ wants us to be like him. You know, uh, a lot of people, we, we look at the things that is happening in the world and we get all upset and thinking that the world is coming to an end. But, but God has told us in his word that these things must take to pass, must come to pass. You know, he said there'll be earthquakes and divers places. Earthquakes don't mean the rumble of the world shaking, but it's gonna be problems in your life. Amen. You know, in Job 14 and 14 and, and um, verse 1, I think he says. The man born of a woman, but a few days, is full of trouble. So you're going to go through some things in your life. You know, everything is not going to be favorable in hunky dory to you. But, you know, when we look at the track that happened right over in, in what they counted, not too far from here. Got killed eight, Lincoln County, got killed eight kids. That is nothing new under the sun. That's evil in the world. He tells us in, in, in the first time that Satan is already what? Yeah. Is already Running around, seeing who he can allow, yeah. who he can get. Look at the killing in London last night. Mm -hmm. These things are going to happen. But he also said in his word, he that endureth until the end shall be what? Right. Shall be saved. You know what endure to the end? Whoever walk with Jesus Christ. Keep your hand on the plow and don't look what? Back. Because if you look back, you're not fit for the kingdom of God. So we have to understand and know this word for ourselves. But I, my thing is I want people to calm down. Calm down. And remember what Paul said. Simply what? Renew your mind. You know, the thing is, we don't want to renew our mind. We think we know everything. We don't want to renew our mind. But he said, be not conformed to the world, but what? Be transformed by renewing of your mind. So how do you renew your mind? By studying and getting to know the word for yourself. How did you think when, when you went to school, you didn't know your ABCs, most of you? But you were taught. And you were taught out of a book. The book that Christ left, most of us don't even crack that book open. All right. Hello? So therefore, you don't know the word for yourself. I know a lot of people that are uh, guys that well, I got my computer out reading when I'm in need. I got my tapes. But the Bible says for you to put your eyes on the word. Study for what? Yes, yourself. Because God is a spirit, and his spirit reveals to each one of us in a different way. Amen. In the way that we might need. You understand? Amen. We have to learn, and Psalm 4, 6, and 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. Be still. Stop running your mouth and get upset and worry about things and know that God is God. He is, he is God. Calm down. God has your life under control if you let him have control. Okay? He wants to be a part of your life. He knows how to handle even the seemingly uh, complex and things that you never thought would happen. Then why does this happen to me? Stop worrying about it and say, I give you to God. Glory to God. To God be the glory. Shut up. A lot of times we run out of mouth so much we can't hear nothing. We can hear God when he, he wants to speak to you. But you're always talking. And now we, we always, almost, we, now we're always texting. 
they, they texting your thoughts, your own Facebook typing. Slow down and talk to the Lord and let him talk to you. See, because as, as a Christian, we have a job. We have a job. We're Christ-like. The Bible said we are the, we are what? The workmanship of Jesus Christ. He told us that the work that he did, we shall do what? Greater. But guess what? We don't want to do what Christ wants us to do. We do what the world wants us to do. The world, the world says hate. But Jesus Christ wants you to say what? Love. The world says take away. But Jesus Christ wants you to do what? Give. We want to do just the opposite. And giving don't mean just giving your stuff. Give your time. Give a little bit of patience. Forgive and be what? Forgive him. But all we want to do is fight. He said, don't do evil for evil. Don't talk about folks because they're talking about you. You talk to them or you talk to Jesus. Hello? And you will find yourself in a state that you've never been before. I can tell you right now, my feet are not even on the floor. Hello? All right. All right? Huh? Yeah? Because I'm floating in Jesus Christ. I don't need alcohol. I don't need marijuana. I don't need cocaine. I don't need the bull or none of that stuff. I got Jesus. He is my natural high. You see, we got to learn what the Father wants us to do. With. And my brother and I read the scriptures today. It was so good for it. Y'all turn to Psalm 82. This is not what we're going to preach today. But, yeah, we are. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We're going to preach Psalm 82 today. Thank you, Lord. We're going to preach Psalm 82. Okay. <laughs> and we're going to preach Psalm 82. So, turn to Psalm 82. Thank you, Lord. See, I don't even know what we're talking about. Tell me I didn't know. Amen. Psalm 82, stand to your feet. When you have it, say amen. 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 Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Father. We serve a good God. And we got to realize that God is in control. If you let God control your life and your finances, guess what? You'll win. If you let God control you, your, 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 your life on your job, you'll win. See, you got to remember, God is the only one that closed doors that nobody can open. But it also can open doors that nobody can close. Look, look, at, look back in the old days. Israel was down, Israel was down in Egypt. And God what? Brought them out. Brought them out. Opened the door for them. They got to, they got to the Red Sea. And Moses, Moses told the people to come on as they smoked the water and was walking through. And Moses looked back and held from Pharaoh's chariots. But what did God do? God closed the door. <laughs> he opened the door for them, but he closed the door on the ones that was doing wrong. Amen. You got to understand how God works. He don't weigh everything in our way, our time table. He does it the way he wants to because he is God. Amen? And in him, your relationship with him <laughs> will keep you closer with those that serve the Lord and keep you closer with your spouses and, and those that love you. Psalms 81 to read. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods. That's a little G. Hello? Y'all know who the gods are? Those of us that are Christians. We're the little gods. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? So long. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. 
and rid them out of the hand of the wicked. They know not, neither will they understand they walk on in darkness. All the foundation of the earth are out of course. You see that right now? Amen. I have said, ye are what? Gods. And all of you are children of the most high. But ye shall die like men. And fall like one of the princes. See, there's two princes. That's the prince of peace, who is Jesus Christ, and the prince of this world, who is trying to steal, kill, and destroy. Amen. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. You may take your seat. Look at somebody and say, let the Lord. Look at somebody and say, let the Lord, let the Lord order your step. Let the Lord order your step. As I was saying to our biggest partners, we, don't, we need to calm down and let God have his way. You know what I'm saying? See, hope. It is hope for the growing Christian in this world. Notice I said the growing Christian because the Bible tells us to seek. If you are not a Christian, you're not going to be seeking that what is right. Mm -hmm. But in, in, in the book that I saw, the Bible that I read in Matthew 6, 31, he said that these things, talking about the things of the world, the heathen seek. So what are the things the heathen seek? The heathen seek money, other mm -hmm. gods, they seek alcohol, they seek marijuana, they seek uh, uh, drugs, they seek all that stuff trying to get the right high. But he said in the, in the second portion of that verse, but your father, if you're a Christian, you got a father and his name is who? Jesus. Me. But your father, Already know what you need. Yes. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And everything shall be added unto you. You know what everything is? The, the peace. The peace of mind. You won't be worried about what they say. You don't worry about what happened yesterday. Paul said, those things are behind. I need what? Behind. I'm seeking the things. <laughs> but we sit here and look back and say, oh, this is what happened to me. She did this or she did. You better get out of the penny parties. Because God got work for us to do. And that's why the world is dying the way it is because we're not doing what God wants us to do. Why not? Look at Proverbs 22 and 6. When we are sitting around here as parents and talking about all the trouble these kids are no good. Those the kids are this and that. You know why the kids are no good? Because the Bible says in Proverbs 22 and 6, train up a child in the way that he should go. For when he's old, he shall not stray what? Far from it. He shall not stray far from it. You know what? what? But we as parents, we are not obedient and do what God said do. We, we think giving them computers, giving them little gadgets, sitting them in front of the TV. Do you know what training our child is? You some of us train our dogs more than we do our children. Hello? We, we worry about training the dog, but we let our children do what they want to do. But the Lord loves you. He's training you. He got his book to train you, but you won't even open up his book. But you're going to train the dog. He said, train up a child. I ain't going to train my child. My child is no If you don't train him, 
The police are going to train. Hello? But see, we, we don't let the Lord on our first day. We think, I know what I want to do it my way. But the Bible says, train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he's old, he won't stay far from it. Well, what do you mean? What do you mean by Pastor Bo? When, he, when he's old, he won't stay far from it. Well, uh, a lot of us don't realize it, but we are staying away from it when we allow obedience to God. Hey? Because any time we're not in line with God's word, we're what? <laughs> we're strained. So when you're not obedient and training up your child, and little Johnny get beat up by the police or by the world, then guess whose fault it is? It's you. Because you didn't take time to show that baby love. And that's our child. As Christians, that's our child. We want to we want to sit them in front of the computer and all that, and, and they, they get into all this mess. Then when they do something wrong, oh, not my child. I trained him up. But you didn't take him nowhere. You don't take him to church. You don't sit down with him and talk with him at the dinner table. We have to realize this being a Christian is a narrow walk, but it's a good walk. Look at Proverbs 23. In verse 12. And it says, apply thine heart unto what? Instruction. That means pay attention to God's word. That's Proverbs 23 and verse 12. Apply thine heart unto instruction. That means apply your heart to God's what? what? Instruction. And thine ears to the words of knowledge. This word is for who? For you. For you to be Christ-like. Let him order what? Your footsteps. Look at the next, next verse. Withhold not correction from the child, for if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. The reason our children don't die are dying because we don't do what God said to. We don't, we're not teaching them how to live. Oh, but I, 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 I gonna beat my child like I like mama beat me. But by mama beating you, you knew wrong, right from wrong. You know right from wrong. Hello? Not that you're gonna beat him unconscious. You beat him according to his what? Doing wrong. But then the beating can be wrong too. Because if you beat him out of anger, guess who is wrong? You done strayed from God's word. Hello? And you old, but you the straight from God's word. So you you beat him out of love, and you show him what love. One of the things I have with parents, most parents will beat up the children when they do something wrong, and but never say anything when they do something right. Say that. Hello. Oh, but you love them. You give them all the stuff and tell them to get out of your face. But you never take the time to sit down and talk with them and show them the way. And that's why they die. Let the Lord on your steps and stop all the stuff that is going on in the world today. You understand? That young man that, that killed those eight people, something happened when he was growing up. Somebody didn't teach him that God is love. If he had known that God was love, he wouldn't have shot his own family members because he thought he would what? Love them. But the main time, sometimes some of the older ones could have been mean to him and didn't show him love. So therefore, he reacted the way he was, thought or felt. We are responsible. God holds us responsible. He told us that in, 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 uh, in Psalms 82. He called you a little what? Little God. <clears throat> Sister told us this morning that they mimic everything we do. Hello? Everything we do, guess what our kids are going to do? So why not let God order your steps? Let him order your steps, and then you won't have to worry about the generation to come. Because the generation behind you is going to walk the way that you walk. If you walk the way of an alcoholic, most of the time your children are going to end up being drunk. Hello? If you 
Come on, well, little man, well, ain't gonna hurt nobody. You messed up your brain, and you messing their brains up too. Monkey see? Monkey do. The next verse, thou shalt be healed with the rod, and shalt deliver his soul from hell. If you, well, I mean, beating don't mean physically beat all the time. Boy, you get up and you go to church with me. Hello? Don't give him a choice. Say that. Let me tell you something. When I was growing up, my daddy wasn't, wasn't a religious man, wasn't a religious leader in my home. My mother was Christ like, and my daddy respected her. But guess what? He expected me to be standing in the car with him and her come out. They weren't waiting on me. I was waiting on who? Yeah. On them. I didn't have no choice. I didn't know so I was going to go to church. Huh. As long as I was under the roof with Ada Bowman, that even after my daddy died, I had to go to church. But guess what? We're going to church and leave children at home. So How are you going to train them up? How are you going to do what God said do? How are you going to be the lifeline for your gener for the generations to come? And that's what happened with Israel. They, 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 they call on God when they're in trouble. But then as soon as everything starts going again, they start looking at the world. Amen. Keep your eyes on the prize. Look at verse 16, our 15 says, My son, if thine heart be wise, my heart shall rejoice, even what? Mine. If you be wise and follow Christ, your heart gonna be what? Your heart gonna be in joy. You gonna the, the heathen are sick out of these things, but your father already in heaven already know what you need. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. It, all things. Send me out to you. You're gonna have peace of mind and everything. And you're gonna rejoice, even mine. Yea, my rain shall rejoice when thy, thy lips speak wild well, right things. Watch what you say. Watch what you do. Because somebody is mimicking you. Let not thine heart in the what? Sinners. Our children right now have the opportunity that a lot of us did not have to go to school for nothing. But rather than go to school, they want to stand on the corner and try to sell the drugs because some joker come by with a wad of one dollar bills with a couple of twenties right by, he making money. And that same one, you take him out Five years from the time you see him, he's in one of three places. Hello? He's in the graveyard, in hell, or either in jail. Hello? And jail is what? Hell. Amen. Amen? And, and you might not be going through no hard days in jail, but it plays on your mind because you can't do what you please. You can't serve and do the things that you want to do. So you have no choice other than who? To turn to God. So why not let God order your step? Let not in the heart in the sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. Every day that you walk, you should be walking and saying, oh Lord, is this right? Is that right? Let the Lord on your steps. David said in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. If you call him your shepherd, follow your shepherd. But every little wind that come along, we want to follow. Ah, uh, you know the story when Jesus had fed the 5,000. And he told the boys to go across to the other side. And they, they got in a, and he went in the mountain to pray. They got in the boat and started going to the other side. And around midnight in the midst of the, the, river, the lake, a tempest came about. And they were rowing 
but we ain't going nowhere. And that's the problem with love. We're ruined, but we ruined it without what? Jesus. And they looked up, and here comes Jesus walking on water. And when they saw what he had been teaching them, they couldn't believe it. They got scared. And that's a lot of it. We, we allow the things that Jesus saw us to get, we get afraid of it because it's not the norm in our lives. And one Peter had enough guts and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come to you. Mm -hmm. And he said, come. And Peter had guts enough to step out the boat. I dare some of y'all to step out the boat and try Jesus. All right. The Bible said he stepped out on the water and started walking on water. And then the wind began to blow. Mm -hmm. And the and breeze. And these things happen to us. Everything is going all right. You're walking with Jesus. Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden, here comes a little wind and you take your eyes yeah, off Jesus. Yeah, and when he took his eyes off Jesus, he started sinking. But let me tell you, just because you sunk a little bit, don't let it stop you. Amen. Put your eyes back on the pride. Because he cried out and Jesus reached down and picked him up. The same God is here to pick you up today. All you got to do is let him order your steps. Let's look at this Psalm 92 so we can get out of here. Uh, you see, what we're looking at here is a fair judge. God will judge the wicked as well as the just. Mm -hmm. That's why he said in his word that the, the rain falls on the just as well as on the unjust. The wicked who have treated others unfairly. See, a lot of us die we treating people unfairly. And we don't realize it because it's the way the world is doing, and we think it's all right. But you need to know the word for yourself. Look at this. Now, the first verse says, God stands in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the God. See, God then told us in Matthew 5 and, and verse 14, I think, ye are what? The light of the world. And a light that is living in place on the hill cannot be here. But it's paid place on what? A lampstand. So everybody in the room can see. But a lot of us are putting our light under what? A bush. We're seeing for people to know that we're Christian. You get out there with those so-called friends and be drinking and smoking and going. And then you expect them to come to church with you? Why should they? <laughs> Some of y'all y'all was here Wednesday night. Um, <laughs> uh, Minister Cape was told us a little joke. All right. Said the man uh, taught a monkey how to dance, <laughs> and he took the money monkey to uh, club and had the monkey dance. The monkey would dance all kind of music. People were paying all kind of money. I mean all kind of money to see the monkey dance. So one day he had the, had the mindset to take the monkey to church with him. And when the when the choir started rocking and singing, said the monkey jumped up and started dancing. And he said, Come on, man, you in church, don't dance. Come on. He said, Say no. Same God. Same See, that's what some of us are. We're the same God. We don't let Jesus lead our footsteps. We want to follow the way of the world and also try to follow Jesus. But he says in his word, you either be hot or cold. If not, he will spew you out of his mouth. But he also says in Revelation 3, verse 19, those as many as he loves, he's chastised. So don't get upset because you get spanked when God chastised you for being wrong. You should be saying, thank you, Lord, for slapping me back in the head. Because yeah. he's a loving God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. We are to be that example. Romans 8, 14 says, for as many 
as led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. So if you let Jesus guide your footsteps, guess what? You are a little God. You are the Son of God. Why not let him uh, lead you? And he says, how long will you judge the unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? How long are we going to sit here and see people doing wrong and we don't do nothing about it? Yep. Well, Pastor Bowman, what can I do with them treating people out on the street wrong? You can go vote. Vote for the right thing. Half of us won't even go up. Vote. We can go out and help somebody. We can, as Christians, we can go down to the juvenile hall and talk to those young people down there. Help somebody. Do what the Lord wants us to do. It is that defend the poor. Who is the poor? He ain't talking about poor and money. Those people that don't know him, but we got people living in our homes that don't know Jesus. And we come in and sit up here every Sunday, but we don't even come back to have our own children. How? We're not being that example at home before them. They said, Father, provoke not your children. Do you know what provoke means? Don't do stupid stuff in front of them and cause them to do the same thing. If you say that they're glutton, guess what they're going to be doing? Glutton. The Bible tells you, provoke not your children. And it says, defend the poor and the fatherless. He's the one that don't have no earthly father. Those that don't know what? Jesus. We got to let our light shine. Let them see Jesus in us. And do justice to the afflicted and the needed. And, and the Bible says, what good does it do for me to pray for somebody when they're hungry and I don't feel them? Hello? I, 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 I know I'm talking to the choir because New, New Beginning is doing all this. But I'm letting you know what you got to do outside of New Beginning. When you go other places, you got to do what God wants want you to do. Again? And he said, deliver the poor and needy and rid them of the head, out of the hand of the wicked. Tell them the truth. Amen. Tell people the truth. <laughs> I, I, I always tell my sister because they're going to hurt her heart and she's going to get Boy. angry with me. I'd rather for her to hurt her heart and she get angry with me than to for her to wake up in hell. Amen. Hello? Y'all remember the story of the rich man and Lazarus? Yeah, I did that. Lazarus was, was uh, all he was looking for was a few crumbs of the rich man's table. But the rich man wasn't giving it to the Okay? And then the, the, the Bible goes that the rich man, I mean, Lazarus died, and he went to heaven in the bosom of Abraham. The rich man, he was died. That's all I say, he died. But when he opened his eyes, guess where he was? He was in hell. And then he wants to start back and say, Father, can I, can I go back and, and tell my brothers and, and all my sisters and all of them uh, that hell is real? But once you cross over, brother, all right. you can't come back. You can't come back. He said, oh, well, will you just have Lazarus to come and dip his finger in water and put it on my tongue? That tells you right there, hell is hot, my sisters and brothers. It's real. And some of us are living in hell in our own home in one minute and walk with Jesus. Say that. Say that. If we're living in hell right here, where are you going to be in the living room? And verse 5 says, that don't they know not, neither will they understand they walk in darkness. See, a lot of people around us don't know they're in darkness because you play both sides of the street. You're with, with me on a Sunday, oh, they praise him. And with them on, on a Sunday night, yeah, get down. <laughs> we got to get this thing right. We got to get this thing right and get it right with Christ. All the foundations of our course, 
See, God meant for things to happen in peace. But we know who messed that up. My brother Adam messed that up. And he played a game with God. <laughs> when God can walk as he, as he Eve had eaten off the fruit. And he had bit off the fruit. And their eyes were open. And they put fig trees, fig leaves on the front. They realized that behind was still life. A lot of us today are walking around with fig leaves on. And our behind is out. Because God can see what you're doing. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Uh -huh. And God come walking in the garden in the cool of the evening and they heard him coming. All right. See, you hear God when he's when he talking to you. That's right. But a lot of us totally ignore him. Oh, Hello? Oh, and they went and tried to hide from him. Hmm. And God said, Adam, where are you? Why are you hiding from him? <laughs> Who done told you something that you did wrong? And then when, when God told when he told God that the woman beguiled me. Mm -hmm. Or the woman gave to me. Like he didn't know. Mm -hmm. See, that's a lot of us claim we don't know. Mm -hmm. But we know. Mm -hmm. God knows. Yes, sir. Galatians 6 and 7 says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth. And also he shall be. And then he said, the, the woman gave it to me. And then he asked Eve, and he said, well, the, the devil beguiled me. You knew he was a snake from the beginning. <laughs> a, lot, a, lot of you, a, lot, a lot of you women, you know the men that you're running out somebody and they ain't never snakes. But you're so hard up for a man instead of sticking with the man. Jesus, you're a man. <laughs> no. And the same thing with a lot of you men. You know she ain't nothing but a, 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 a snake. <laughs> and the story said that this lady found this snake that was frozen. And uh, she said she's going to take him in her tent and make him a pet. That's it. When the snake got thawed out, he ran up and bit her. She said, why are you bite me? I'm trying to take care of you. He said, you knew I was a snake from the beginning. Say that. Mm -hmm. But we want, if you want, it's just like, just like mess. Mess Hell don't stink until you stir it. We have to learn to let God order mm, our footsteps. Yeah, the earth is our course. Mm. Everybody want to believe wrong before they believe right. That's it. You think majority rules, but it don't rule. God said, where well, there's two or three, <laughs> touch and agree. And all together together on one accord, he'll be God in this. Look at God right here. Look at God right here. <laughs> Look at the things that you're doing. It ain't about a few of us. It don't take a few. All it takes is God. Jesus. And that's all you got to do is learn to let him on your footsteps. He says, I have said, ye are what? God. So do my what? My will. Let me order your steps. Yes, and all of your children, all of your children are of the most what? <laughs> we all belong to God. Yeah. But if we don't <clears throat> continue to do what God wants to do, more of them go to hell. Amen. Because, and also, uh, Isaiah 29 said, hell is enlarging itself because of the weakness of man. God didn't intend for all to perish. He wants to live a wonderful life in hell. It says, but ye shall die like what men and fall like one of the princes. Don't think that you're evil with Jesus Christ. You're still a man. Because if you don't do right, you will die like one of the princes. The prince of this world is the devil, or either the prince of Jesus Christ. Now see, 
Death is one thing that we can't get away from. See, that's one thing we can look forward to. All of us got a re reservation <laughs> with some cemetery. <sighs> you understand? No. So we're going to die and leave here. But the point is, where you going to go when you, your breath go back to be judged by God? He said, Arise, O God, judge days, for thou shalt inherit all nations. Well, that tells me that after Jesus had uh, died on the cross, the Bible tells me that in Matthew, the 28th chapter, by that 18th verse, it says that he rose from the dead with all power. He said unto the boys, therefore, uh, I want you to go to all nations. Uh, to baptize, preach, teach, and baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. See, that's what Jesus wanted us to do. He wanted us to be uh, his mouthpieces. He wanted us to be his ears and his eyes on the earth. He wanted us to be his spokesman to tell people there's another way other than the world way. He said, now you tell them what I have told you, mm -hmm. and I'll be with you what? Always. Always all way to the what? The mm -hmm. end of the world. Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to tell you is that Jesus <laughs> leads you and guides you in every step that you take. <laughs> he said, now I don't understand why some people can't understand how easy it is. See, because I found out in the years that I have lived, he's my wheel in the middle of the wheel. I can tell you one time I thought I was a big wheel, but when he came into the middle of my life, I found out that I was guided by that little wheel. And that little wheel is Jesus Christ. He's my bread in a starving land. I don't know where I have ever gone without eating. Because since I got to know him for myself, he supplied everything that I need. He's my water in a dry land. You know, I don't even get thirsty. See, we, if you look here in the beginning, we got some more water stored up. <laughs> oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. Because we just like the ants. Store up. We store up. Don't just store up timber on the earth. That's right. But store up timber in heaven. Do good and let Jesus lead your footsteps. The one that I'm talking about is Mary's baby. The Bible said he came down to 42 generations. He walked on this earth for 33 years. He preached for three years, teaching us how to love one another. The Bible said when his time was going now, he was riding in the street of Jerusalem on a donkey. Yes, and was. all the people that claimed to be his followers were hollering, Hosanna, Hosanna to the highest, and laying down their clothes in the palm tree. <laughs> that was on a Friday. We call it Good Friday. Mm -hmm. But the next Thursday, those same people were saying, crucify him. Are you crucifying him today? By not being obedient and doing what he wants oh, you to do. They were saying, crucify him. And the pilot, they took him to Caiaphas' house. And they marched in the pilot. Pilot said, I'm going to wash my hands because I can't no find fault. nothing. No fault in this man. Nothing but what? Love. Jesus. But a lot of us won't wash our hands of the mess that we're hanging around yeah, with. <laughs> See, some of the people we hang around with, we need to wash our hands of and he said, now, I find no fault in this man. Choose you this day. Jesus, the man, Jesus, of Barabbas. You know what the crowd hollered? Give us Barabbas. You know who Barabbas was? Barabbas was the murderer. Had killed people. But they chose a murderer over one that loved you. That loved you so much. And they tell me they took my master back to Kevin's house. They beat him up all night long. They spit upon him. They put a crown of stones on his head. And blood came running down 
in his face. That's right. Are you causing blood to run down on his face? Mm -hmm. Are you lying, cheating, stealing, backbiting, hating on folks? Are you doing those things? And the Bible says the blood ran down his face. But he never said among the words. And that early that Friday morning, they placed the old cross on his shoulders and stopped parading them through the streets of Jerusalem up to a place called God, up the hill. And the Bible said he fell down. But thank God for yours and my sins. He got up. Thank you, Lord. And he made it all the way up to God, up the hill. And the Bible said, my father, let the man that he loved so much put nails in his hand, nails in his feet, and allow the man that he loved so much to stretch him wide and hung him high. He stayed on that cross from the sixth to the ninth hour. But before he came up the ghost, he looked down and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. Do you know whether you cheat on God or not? Do you know whether you hate on God or not? He want to be your leader. Let him guide your footsteps. And the Bible said that he gave up the ghost and they pierced him in the side. And I came love. And, water. and they took him down off the cross and they placed him in a bar with two. Somebody knew he was going to get up. Jesus. He stayed there oh, all day Friday night. He stayed there all day Saturday. He stayed there all night Saturday night. But early Sunday morning, he got up with all power. And the power was here for you to take and go out and do his will. There might be somebody here today that don't know this man Jesus that I'm talking about.